So it's been a week since the SPAR came out. I think it was universally seen as a very positive um, outcome, but it'd be good to hear your perspective having, you know, formerly been the FAA administrator and just how you think the FAA viewed it. Yeah. Well, I have to say, this is really one of what I call a seminal moment for the FAA and for the United States, right? This is the first time in 80 years that the FAA has created a new category for aircraft, this power lift category. So in this as far, it gives us the rule set for the pilot. It tells us how you operate. So all of that thing, and then to be able to do that all in record time. It took them about 18 months. Normally it takes five to seven years to create a new rule. So that kind of speed now gives us the industry clarity. But then, you know, let me just, you know, flip it back to you. Now that you've got this clarity from this as far, what does it mean for Archer? Yeah, I think it was a, a moment for the industry that relieved a lot of stress because I think when the initial draft came out, it was a little bit scary. There were yeah. definitely some parts of that that would have been very challenging for the industry. And um, they, the FAA worked, I think, really well hand in hand with industry to come up with rules that would enable this new category to flourish, um, of course, to do it safely, but to not just look back at some of the old rules and try to adopt maybe, let's say, fixed wing, you know, airplane rule or a, a helicopter rule to, I, you know, realize that this is a new category and it is different. And so I thought that was really incredible. And it also sent, I think, a good signal to the world that the U.S. does want to maintain its leadership position in aviation. And so a lot of the um, OEMs in eBTOL are based in the U.S. And so the FAA did need to step up and take this uh, leadership position. And so I thought that was a really great outcome. But it is obviously just the beginning, though. There's still so much more work that we have to go do on the certification program, on operationalizing the industry, on scaling manufacturing. So a ton of work still left to do. Right. And, and to that point, right, this is another thing I think, you know, the FAA, you know, deserves a bit of credit. And also the administration, they stood up an interagency working group, in effect saying, let's take a whole of government approach to this. Mm -hmm. You've got energy, you've got commerce, you've got homeland security, you got TSA. So all of these people are together in this process to how does how does the US as a in, as a nation not only enable this new sector but allow it to scale up right and to be not only a success here at home but around the world if you look at the larger picture for you do you think there what do you see as sort of the remaining challenges from an FAA or government perspective that allows Archer to really get to commercialization yeah, um, I think it was a, a lot of the feedback I will get, a lot of the conversation will be, well, you know, given there's so many challenges in the aviation industry, of course, they must not be focused on, you know, on Archer and on eVTOL. There's bigger things to go deal with. Mm -hmm. And I think that this showed that, no, the FAA can do multiple things at the same time. And so they were able to focus on this industry and help us put um, a really p important piece of like kind of, you know, framework regulation in place to help us, you know, really go and scale. But it now shifts the onus back to us in the industry where we have to go actually perform against our you know, type certification program. We have all the company level testing um, to go do the, the flight test for credit you know, portion you know, of, the, uh, of the program. And so a lot of it does come back to us now to go actually perform. And I think that's gonna be critical because we have seen um, a lot of demand around the world for the product, not mm -hmm. just Archer, but you know, the whole industry has seen that. And so I do think it's important that we get through this. And of course, it's going to be, um, you know, increasingly challenging, um, you know, as we as we get closer to uh, to operationalizing, because there are so many other factors that come into this. Just standing up the operations mm -hmm. are going to be very very challenging, and there's going to be a lot of bumps in the road. Scaling manufacturing is going to be very very challenging. The supply chain, of course, will always be challenging, and so this was the first step. But there's still a ton more that we have to go focus on. Yeah. So thinking about supply chains, I've thought a lot about that. So part of it's, you know, I, I remember you and I having lots of conversations around what does it mean to have like tier one suppliers? I know there's a model that says you go to vertical integration, but as you think of it, now that we've got the certification pathway in place, we've got the operational framework that is now in place, does it make it more or less important when you think about your, you going out and partnering with big entities like, you know, Safran, you know, uh, Stellantis, United and others? Yeah, I think the, the partnerships that we have put in place have enabled us to move really, really, really quickly. It's the thesis at Archer has always been to try to find the quickest path to commercialization, which meant the lowest risk path. Mm -hmm. um, and so we did partner 
for a lot of the key um, components and systems um, that we're building. But we also do spend a lot of time building up a lot of systems ourselves. So for example, the powertrain, you know, we have, you know, I don't know, around 150 engineers or so that are working on building the powertrain in-house because that's, it is a critical system yeah. um, that we are building. And so um, I think there's a nice mixture that we've really chosen here to help, you know, limit the risk, but also to maximize the performance of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think we built, you know, an amazing aircraft and I'm excited for this pathway to allow us to certify and ultimately kind of show it to the whole world. Yeah, I'll say, you know, I, I think back to what drew me to Archer, right? I'm sitting there, FA minister, lots of options. But the thing I really liked, number one, was your passion from the first time we met, coming here, seeing the passion of all the, you know, my, you know, fellow archers, if you will, right? Uh, what, what do you, how do you think the average person here at Archer thinks about this now that this is place? Is that, does it, has that ramped up that level of excitement? I think the, the SFAR being published was a signal to the world that the FAA is serious mm -hmm. about certifying these aircraft and creating this new category and creating a pathway for companies like Archer to certify, mm -hmm. which in turn has really sent you know, this signal and kind of almost like shockwave to all these different, um, you know, uh, customers that Archer has and, you know, future customers that we've started to just engage with. And I think the employees can all see that and hear that and feel that we've had many numerous delegations from all around the world now come to visit Archer. We show them flight tests, we show them the factory, we show them the battery manufacturing line. I think that has really amped up the energy around here. Um, and so, it's moments like this that I think people look back on and say, okay, collectively everything is working in the right industry. We've like the industry has all put its, you know, its arms down against each other and all kind of came together to work um, to kind of solve this problem. So I think that was a pretty big deal.